Good morning and uh, a warm welcome to everyone here present to worship our Heavenly Father on this special Father's Day. And um, I can see the presence of Josh Cole. Uh, thank you very much for coming back. This is where it all started. On, on Father's Day for that matter, maybe something is on the offing. And uh, I recognize Graham is here as well. He remembered to come back. And uh, Jane Doda is back from uh, overseas. Um, and, and this is Jaden. <laughs> what a wonderful day to see so many of you um, here in this, in this hall. And if it is your first time, uh, please, uh, we offer you another special welcome. Um, understand if you guys are not feeling well, we've got colleagues. Um, the name that comes off my head straight away is Derek. Uh, he's, an, uh, he's not well. And um, we know David. We, we, we had uh, updates about um, uh, Morio Old Tower. Um, uh, so I'm not so sure um, if she's still in hospital. Uh, but let us remember to pray, to pray for our colleagues wherever they are. And I know some, even in this hall, they still need our prayers. Um, I've got a few announcements today, uh, but pardon me. What I normally do is I write my announcements in Shona, and then I use Google Translation. So if the English is not that perfect, just blame Google, yeah? yeah. And uh, the first one I have for you is the safe and sound training sessions. We've got one starting tomorrow, um, 7 uh, p.m., and um, all youth workers and, uh, part of, and the leadership team and anyone else um, in the church is welcome to attend. Uh, a refresher, um, this is a refresher course and probably the first one for some of us as well. Um, please bring your pencils, rulers and compasses and the geometric sets. Um, so these will be running sessions. If you want to hear more about this, please uh, see Jonathan. But we've got a flyer on the notice board as well. And the second announcement I have is we've got colleagues who are traveling to, is it better on trend for the um, Armed Forces Day? It's canceled. My apologies on that. It was still on my notes. And um, the next one is, um, Children and Youth Weekend. This flyer is also on the notice board. Uh, there will be a lot of activities starting from Saturday. And um, there will be Saturday, it starts at Saturday 2 p.m. Um, this is on the, on the 1st of July. And there will be afternoon tea uh, for uh, fundraising for the youth sale and it will be five pounds per ticket, and you are all uh, invited, and you are all welcome. Uh, so there are other sessions as well within that Saturday. Um, at 4 p.m., youth celebration. Come and listen to our amazing kids, uh, all welcome. And uh, 6 p.m. on the very same Saturday, it's a movie night for the children and youth. And uh, Sunday uh, will be a special one at 10.30. Uh, this will be on the 2nd of July. Uh, including prize giving and all welcome. I need to emphasize on the prize giving. Please come on time. Make sure when the prizes are being called out, you are present to collect something for your child. 
it's quite embarrassing to give it somebody else when you know it should be present. And um, on the very Sunday, that is the 2nd of uh, July, will be the Sunday Night Live, uh, a night of uh, worship, prayer, and fellowship. Again, 7 p.m. Uh, here at Lee Central. And um, um, it's uh, Rosa and Jonathan leading that. Please come in your numbers. The last time we had one, it was worth it. So I'm inviting you to attend. I also have, this is now more about technology. That's not my face, so yeah. Um, I'm told you can scan this. It's to do with the Leeds Festival. And if you want to volunteer, you scan this. It takes you straight to the um, volunteer form. So it has to be done properly. If you're not so sure, uh, John is there, and, and I think Josh is also there to help you, John. Yeah. So please, I'll put this on the. There is another one, a copy already on the on the notice board. Yeah. And um, I've got a few names here. If you know anyone about uh, um, any one of these people, please let me know. Uh, Lola Jean Mazivire, Chidochweshe, Isabel Mazingi, Noreen John, and Kimberly Motsi. Please let me know um, as soon as af after the, this meeting. And um, tomorrow, there is a big birthday day. It's the second birthday day for Freddy. No, I don't mean you, Freddy. You're over, you know, come on. Fred, don't get excited. This is Freddy uh, Clayton. Uh, he's having his second birthday day tomorrow. So I think it's appropriate for us to sing him happy birthday day now. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, Eddie. happy birthday to you. Good morning to you all. Oh, you've all gone to sleep now, haven't you? See, this is the effect that you're having on people. <laughs> We're going to join in worship as we sing our opening song, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. It's the third verse that says, Father-like he tends and spares us, well our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise him widely as his mercy flows. Let's stand and we'll sing the four verses straight through, please. <laughs>
And we come on this Father's Day, a day when we acknowledge not just fathers, but all of those in our lives, all of those men and father figures in our lives who have nurtured us, who have provided for us, who have loved us. And we acknowledge that this day is a very poignant day for all of us. We recognize that not everybody has a good experience of an earthly father, but we come to worship a heavenly father, a father who tends and spares us, who knows the weaknesses in our lives and gently bears us in his hands, as those words remind us, rescues us from all our foes, who is bigger and stronger and more loving than any earthly father can be. We, if we've had an experience of a loving earthly father, we find that sometimes difficult to understand. But God, our heavenly father, knows us. He knows what we need. He knows what we want. He knows the things that bring us joy. He knows the things that cause us sadness or anxiety. And he meets us just where we are this morning. Let me share with you some words from Matthew chapter 7. From verse 7 to 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds. To him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? How much more will our Heavenly Father give to us? There are treasures awaiting for you and me from our Heavenly Father. We're going to share as the worship band come and lead us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. And as we acknowledge all that this day means, as we give thanks for those who have influenced our lives, who have blessed us, who have nurtured us, who have brought us to this point, whether that be an earthly father, whether it be a relative, whether it be a family friend, a neighbor, those within our core and church family, whoever they may be, we give thanks to those men in our world and in our lives this morning. But we ask that the Lord also might open our eyes so that we can see what he wants for us as our Heavenly Father. Let's share together before we pray.
Lord, may the words of that song be the prayer of our hearts this morning. That you would open our eyes to see more and more of your love and your goodness and your provision for each one of us. Lord, we come into your presence this morning. We come to say thank you for those within our lives as we have grown, as we have been nurtured, as we have been provided for. Whether they be our earthly father, whether they be friends, whether they be people within our church, Lord, we give you thanks for all of the men here this morning. We know, Lord, that they are precious to you, but may they know also that they are precious to each one of us. Lord, we recognise that within our world today, there will be many for whom Father's Day is not a thing. There will be women that are providing both roles and children who are looking for that father figure in their lives. And we acknowledge that just now. We acknowledge also, Lord, that this day will bring sadness into the hearts of many. A sadness that is come from a loving relationship and loss. And we acknowledge that also this morning. We acknowledge the privilege of knowing those around us who have loved us and have nurtured us. But Lord, this morning we also recognise that above and beyond what any earthly father can give, you are our heavenly father. You know us intimately more than anyone else. And you long, you long to provide for us. You long to nurture us. You long to show your love and have that acknowledged in our lives. And so, Lord, as we come before you this morning, we ask that you would open our eyes to see that and that we would lift you up in our praise and in our hearts and that our lives would respond and people would see that we are children of yours. Be with us, Lord, we pray, in the name of Jesus and for your kingdom's sake. Amen. this Father's Day when we focus on parenting. I don't know if any of the mothers have ever, ever had the uh, need to say, will you just listen to what your father's saying? Or perhaps um, the fathers have had the uh, need to say, will you just listen to what your mother's saying? Well, on most occasions, it's good to listen to what our earthly parents are saying. But it's always good to listen to what our Heavenly Father, our Divine Parent, is saying and to respond to it. And that's what's reflected in Stuart Townend and Keith Getty's beautiful hymn, Speak, O Lord, as we come to you.
Thank you to the band. Beautiful words, a beautiful message for each one of us as we learn and we grow in the love of God. Um, I need a, a father and child volunteer for the next part of our meeting. Do we have a father and child here that could help with the next part of our meeting? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> volunteer who doesn't know what they're letting themselves in for. <laughs> so, you've got to word this very carefully. It's good that you could walk up on the platform this morning without the boot on. That's good to see. <laughs> um, how much is your dad worth? <laughs> You're not allowed to say something like, priceless because that's that's a really that's what we expect isn't it that's what we expect this morning this is the only bit of talking that he's going to have to, have to do really um so so how much would you say he was worth Not 2p 2p <laughs> Right. Um, well, I'm going to take it's a little bit more than that. It's a little bit more than that. Um, 20p. Oh, it's going up. Um, any, any better offers from the floor? Um, did, you, did you buy him a gift or a card or anything today? Right. Um, so they were worth more than 2p or 20p, I presume. Yeah, is <laughs> All right. Oh, so you can't tell us that. Okay. Right. Well, apparently, um, the body, um, the human body, now we're not talking about selling organs here, please. The human body um, is made up of um, six main, well, 99% of the body is made up of six main elements. Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a biologist, um, I'm not a, um, a medic or anything like that, but I do know um, from uh, Dr. Google, um, that 99% of the body is made up of six elements. So um, I would like you to stick these onto him, please. Um, right, it's 65% of him is oxygen. There you go, just, just stick it somewhere. 18% um, is carbon. Apparently that can make 9,000 pencils, so, you know, they're not very sticky, are they? Um, Ten percent is hydrogen. I'm not even sure you could do with half of these elements, but somebody will be able to tell me. It's got a handful of Woody and <laughs> other characters. Um, the steep three percent is uh, nitrogen. Um, one point four percent is calcium. I thought that would be higher than that because I would have thought bones and teeth on their own, but only one point four percent. And 1.1% is phosphorus. There you go. Those are your six main elements of um, a, human, a human person. Um, overall, um, it's estimated to be worth, you know, if it's just elements, um, £2.72. So <laughs> you might have spent that much on a card, really. Um, if you were to um, look at other parts of the body, so um, the skin, if it was um, cowhide, if you were going to compare human skin with cowhide, um, it's worth about £3.50. Might get a pair of shoes out of that, but then you'd have to pay for them to be made. Um, and um, let me just look at my statistics. 55% um, of you is water. So... If it was bottled water, um, we work out that might be about £42, but it wouldn't be if it was out of the tap, would it? So I think we'll half that one, because £42 for water seems a lot of money. I wouldn't pay that much for water. There you go, we'll just add that one there. A 
Of course, we know that the human body is way more than those component parts. We know that we have character. We know that we have personality. We know that we have gifting. We know that we are way more than those individual component parts. If I were to ask well, how much are you worth, I would imagine it would be way more than the £3.50 for your skin, £2.72 for the component um, elements. Apparently there is enough iron in the body for um, three iron nails. So there you go. We could melt you down, I presume. I don't know that you melt down. Um, and make three nails out of you. Um, there is enough uh, sulphur in you to worm a dog, apparently. Um, <laughs> Worm a dog, like a worm tablet for a dog. Um, who knows? But we are more than the sum of the parts of our body. Each one of us is precious. Each one of us is priceless. Do you realise how priceless you are? Do you realise the contribution that you bring to our core family as well as your personal family? I will let you take all those stickers off um, now um, and, and go and sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Ginny, we should give him a round of applause. I'm going to chop it for a treat. But we do have some gifts for the fathers. Each one of whom is priceless, each one of whom brings their own personality, each one of whom is not perfect, but we acknowledge that, each one is a work in progress from our Heavenly Father, each one of us are a work in progress from our Heavenly Father, but even though we are a work in progress and not yet finished, we are priceless to God. I have some um, gifts for the men this morning. For those of you who do eat meat, they are pork pies. <laughs> do you hear that? Ooh, ooh a pork pie during the meeting. <laughs> for those of you who don't eat meat, I have some apple pies. Um, I would like these to be given out just now. We haven't actually got a song for these to be given out during, have we? So we might have to just pause for a moment because the offering song um, is coming next. Um, if you have your dad here this morning, or daddy, or father, or pops, or whatever you call your dad, perhaps one of you from the family would like to come out and collect one of these little pork pies. <laughs> and perhaps when we have, um, when some of the young people have given their um, pie out, um, to their father. You would like to make sure that every, um, every gentleman in the building gets one of these just now. Maybe we can have a little bit of the tune from the uh, offering song before. If anyone hasn't got one, could you just give us a wave? Because I know there are probably a lot of ones. 
If you can look round and make sure that everyone has been given one. These are for all of the gentlemen, so make sure that everyone has one. If you are a gentleman and you have not been given a pork pie yet, please wave at me or something or wave at Lindsay so she can make sure that you get one. Arnold on the back hasn't got one. Has Charles got one? Lindsay's on her way upstairs now. Has anybody upstairs not been given one? I tried to tie the string on these so tight that you wouldn't get it open during the meeting. <laughs> I will also say that they're dated the 24th of June, so you don't have to eat it during the meeting, but it is getting quite warm in here. <laughs> From that pork pie, why a pork pie? It's not beautiful like a bunch of flowers, but it is solid. The pastry, we might say, um, is essential. The outside of the pastry, absolutely essential. And every one of you are essential within our world today. We might say the pastry is quite bland until the filling goes in and the juices of the filling make the pastry take up the smell. It is what is inside each one of you that is precious. What you bring, the richness and the flavour that you bring to the life of those who you are in contact with. Whether it be your own um, children or other people, your colleagues, your friends, your community, and this church. And then, of course, without the lid, the contents of the middle would just seep out. They will bubble over the top and be lost. The lid stops the beautiful stuff from leaking out. We might say that God the Father is the outside, the essential, the creator of our world. The center is the taste and see that God is good. The, the filling, the meaty bit of the middle. And the lid being the Holy Spirit that seals in all that is good within you. Continue to be the men of God that he has created you to be. And may God bless you this day. If there are some left at the end, we'll pop them out. If you want to take one home because your special person is somewhere else, then please feel free to use them. Um, don't just take one home to eat in the car on the way. Give it to somebody. That's what they're there for. We're going to continue in our worship now as we have opportunity to give in our offering. Thank you. As we come and give in our offering, we're going to share in the singing of song number 72, if you're using songbooks. Uh, Ruth's been playing the tune while we have uh, been giving those uh, gifts out. You can't stop God, you can't stop rain from falling down, prevent the sun from shining, you can't stop spring from coming in, 
or winter from resigning, or still the waves, or stay the winds, or keep the day from dawning. And it's these last two lines, isn't it, that is the key to this song. You can't stop God from loving you. His love is new each morning. So let's stand. As we sing, we'll uh, give in our offering. We have two card readers once again available this morning, so that should ease that. So uh, let's stand and we sing these three verses, or these verses straight through. Take your seats. We're now going to listen to the message that the songsters have for us this morning, following which the children and whoever goes out can go out to their own activity. But first, we'll listen to the songsters, please. Thank you.
thank you to the songsters for that message this morning. We turn to scripture at this point in our worship to St. Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 5, the well-known words of the fruit of the Spirit passage. Where Paul contrasts life in the Spirit with life of the sinful nature. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Amen. So here we are on Father's Day with words that tell us from Scripture that God wants to give us good things and he wants us to grow in our lives those good qualities. But what does any father want for his child? This isn't a question that is just for the gentleman here. It's for all of us. What sort of things would you want or have you wanted or do you still want for young people and your children, even if they are adults today? What sort of things? You can shout out at this point. Happiness. It was a very quiet happiness. It wasn't a happiness. It was a very, very quiet happiness. We would all agree with that. Anything else? Good health. Faith in God. Faith. faith. Good. Truthfulness. Where did that come from? Truthfulness, John. Anything else? Wisdom. Fulfillment yeah, in their chosen career. Anything else? Thank you. I'm sure you've all got things in your mind. There's a whole list of things, isn't there, that we want from that very precious moment when we hear the first cry of a newborn child. We want the very best. Everything that is wholesome, everything that is good. When we look at the dedication ceremony within the Salvation Army, those are the promises that we make as parents to try and um, help to withhold all of the things that will be harmful in mind, in body and in spirit and to nurture in all that is good and that is true and that is honest and lovely. We want the very best for our young people. And at the moment there are young people upstairs in our building being nurtured in all that is good, being taught the truths of Scripture. 
but sometimes helping a child to grow up to be healthy and happy as an adult comes at a price. Michael would say that that's taken some of his hair away and perhaps given him some frown lines. I won't tell you which of our three children, probably all of them at times, have led to that. It's not easy. Parenting is not an easy task. It comes at a price. We're not always very sensible ourselves at the things that we think make us happy, are we? We can make impulsive decisions over things that we think will bring us joy, and sometimes it's not very long-lasting. We can react quickly with our wants and our needs instead of those things that are truly um, our needs. We shared the very beginning of our worship together from Matthew chapter 7 and verses 7 to 11, where Jesus is speaking about um, God knowing how to give good gifts, perfect gifts, to his children. And he uses the analogy of giving bread for a hungry child and not a stone, giving fish and not a snake. Those are obvious things, aren't they, unless you're trying to trick, trick your children. What about the times when our prayers are not answered, when we speak to God in prayer? In those words we read, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. But what about those times when we pray to God and our prayers are not answered in the way that we were demanding? Or when we feel like we're having to wait and we're suffering because of that? Sometimes God may even say no to our prayers. It may well be that some things are not in our best interests. God sees the bigger picture. God knows that when we need, we dig deeper into him. And we learn, sometimes in the hardest of ways, but we learn. How many times have we seen a parent with a screaming child has been told, no, they can't have something? or they're not allowed to do something. Sometimes it can be the simplest things that cause a full-on meltdown in the middle of Tesco's, and the child is lying on the floor. And I think the older that we get, and the more times that we've been there ourselves, the more we try and ignore that and quietly empathize with the parent. The kicking and the screaming of the child that's having a full meltdown Um, lands on the parent and the parent will quite often hold on to the child to try and stop that how it must grieve God though when through the love that he has for us he restrains us when we make mistakes he prevents us from wanting things that are not not good for us and he takes the brunt of our frustrations when actually he wants to comfort us. C.S. Lewis said about us beating on the breast of God from the safety of his arms, from the, the cuddle of God, and we take our frustrations out, crying out to him. Our fa- Heavenly Father is like a loving, earthly father. He wants to protect us. From danger. He gives us guidelines in scripture and teaching in scripture by which we can build and we can develop our lives, not just for us to keep on the straight and narrow, but also for us to grow in his likeness, to grow more and more in his likeness and in, in our relationship with him. It's safe to say that when we were young, when we were young in our faith and our understanding and our relationship with our Heavenly Father. It's perhaps not that deep. We know that God loves us, but that might be where it stops. Like a child who knows that they are loved and provided for and reprimanded for doing wrong. But as we grow up, our relationship with God matures as well, as well as our human relationships. And we can appreciate that our earthly fathers may have worked very hard in order to provide for us. They may have struggled along the way. There may have been frustrations that were kept and not shared with us. 
We can understand why we were reprimanded for doing wrong when we were younger. We can understand that the, the love of our Father goes deeper. With our Heavenly Father, as we mature and we grow, it can be something very similar. We do less fighting for our own way. And our love and our devotion helps us to give and to submit more freely for all that he wants for us. So firstly, for our children, we want health and happiness. They were the things that were said. God wants health and happiness for us as well. Spiritual health, spiritual happiness. Secondly, we want, or fathers want, their children to be nurtured with a strong moral code, to make the right decisions in life. And as children, we take on that moral code from those who love us and those who care for us and those who nurture us, those who we spend quality time with and who set us an example. And in Galatians chapter 5, Michael shared with us um, from 16 to 25 and the verses, sets out for us the things that any good father would want for his children to be nurtured in, a lasting way of life that will form and will set a a precedent for those decisions, the foundation, the characteristics that we are to have. They might not always come naturally. And verse 17 there speaks about the, the conflict between the sinful nature, which is always there, always tempting us, and the fruits of the Spirit that we are encouraged to grow and to nurture so that they become part of our everyday life. Now, the fruits of the Spirit are not the same as our individual gifts. These are natural qualities. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. These are things that we are to be nurtured in, that God wants us to grow in our lives. These gifts and qualities are the work of a lifetime. They don't all come naturally to us. And everyone who accepts that they are a child of God is to develop them, to take off the sinful nature that is part of us and to clothe ourselves in those beautiful spiritual fruits that are available to all, that can be nurtured in all, and that will be visible for all in the life of Jesus. So health and happiness, a strong moral code that will grow with the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Now the non-negotiable, available to all fruits of the Spirit, provide that moral code of the Christian life that leads us nicely into this third quality that a good father would want to give his children. And that is encouragement to grow and to develop as an individual. The individual that God has made you and I. To be your own person. Not to model yourself on somebody else and try and be somebody that you're not, but to be yourself. This is where God gifts his children with gifts of the Spirit. Not just fruits of the Spirit, but gifts of the Spirit as well, to marry up with our natural personality. The things that will make you you, that God has gifted you to serve him. It might be our natural abilities, our talents and our passions, the things that we're interested in, the things that make us tick, the things that excite us in life and that give us that spark to want to do more. The gifts of the Spirit which we will spend time looking at over the years. The things that help us to be individual in our relationship and our service for God. If you think about the things that you enjoy doing, the chances are that is where your gifting for God lies. If you enjoy spending time with people, then the chances are that your gifting from God lies with 
reaching people and sharing with people. That might be one-to-one. -one. It might be in a collective group. If you enjoy serving people, it might be that your gifting lies there. If you are confident in speaking out and speaking the word of God, it might be that your gifting lies there. But it's been given to you individually for the purpose of you to serve God. So what does a father, a good father, want for his children? Health and happiness. And that sometimes means not allowing us to have our own way and not allowing your own children to have their own way. Sometimes having to say no. Sometimes having to reprimand. But always loving. Secondly, for us to develop that moral code through that non-negotiable development of the spiritual gifts, spiritual fruits, rather, that all of us should possess. And then thirdly, for us to be as valuable as an individual by marrying up our personality and our natural talents, our ability and our passions with the spiritual gifts that God selects, especially to fit you and your area of service. If a human father wants those things for his children, as Matthew chapter 7, verse 11 says, how much more, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What do you need from God today? as your heavenly father what is it you need as you come before him i would encourage you to shake out of your hands all of those things that might be a barrier between you coming before god this morning he wants the very best for you and for me beyond that of an earthly father because he can provide he has wisdom beyond any of the frailties of a human being. And we come before him and we sing, Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever be evermore your own. Never let my heart grow cold. Never let me go. These are the promises that God has made us that we can claim this morning. Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. And on this day when we say thank you to the men in our lives, we say thank you to God. And we ask that he might open up our hearts and minds so that we come to him and we ask, we seek, and we knock on the door so that he can come and share with us. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What do you need from God this morning? We're going to share this chorus a couple of times through. Our place of prayer is always open. God's door is always open. Come and seek him and share with him today. Yes.
recognize that we can sing those words, we can make those words our prayer because you are our perfect heavenly Father. And Lord, as we've given you thanks today for those who have surrounded us during our growing up and our nurturing, we give you thanks for them this day. But Lord, we pray that as we come before you just now, we recognize that that yearning for our health and happiness in the spiritual form continues to come from you. And that sometimes means, Lord, that you close doors for us. You say no to us. You hold us within your arms as we take our frustrations of life out on you. And Lord, we just thank you for your love that surrounds us. We thank you, Lord, that you gift us with fruits of the Spirit that can nurture us and grow us into the people that you want us and you intend us to be. And we just pray, Lord, as we look through that list of fruits, we are all aware of those that we struggle with the most. And we just ask, Lord, that you would continue your work in our lives. And as a father, Lord, who knows how to give good things to his children, we recognize that as we bow before you this morning, you have gifted each one of us with spiritual gifts with which to serve you. Lord, help us to have open eyes to discover those gifts and to find the best way of serving you. Lord, continue your work in our lives. And as each one of us bows before you just now, may we come with open hands to receive. You know what we need. You know what is good for us. And you know what we come yearning for just now. So Lord, hear and answer our prayers. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God's love to me, God's love to you, is wonderful. And we're going to sing those words as we conclude our worship this morning. Let's stand and we'll sing straight through.
And now as we go from this place, Lord, may your love and your strength go with us, guide us and protect us, and keep us safe until we meet again. Amen.